Minus 3.5 air, yeah, minus 8. Uh, I mean, it really does feel summertime compared to the last couple of weekends of racing. Yeah, and it's a tough sprint course, isn't it, Mike, with two challenging climbs? Yes, this is testing. A decent recovery after that first initial blast of pace up to 270 metres along the track and gentle undulations along the way. And this is a very fast a entrance into the finish area, really easy, and it's all about getting the correct line to the finish. Well, let's have a look at the qualification times. The best always going off uh, pretty early on. It'd be nice to see Lena Canton of France if she can get through. Lynn Svan, great to see her back on form. Jess Diggins, the overall leader uh, and, of course, the distance leader. Can she get herself a win in the sprint? She's actually looked a lot sharper than she has in, in recent years and much improved in classic. Will she show the same sort of improvement in the freestyle sprints as well? Uh, further down... And yeah, Weber going off just behind um, uh, Fisher, and then Victoria Carl, of course, who has uh, an Olympic gold to her name from the team event in Beijing. Um, yeah, what, how do you feel? She's going third place last weekend. It's br absolutely brilliant. She's having a, an incredible, at her age and her stage in her career, she's managed to turn her performances around, and mostly the work that she's managed to put in in the summer months. Hey, if you said that to her, she'd turn around and say, what about your age? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it just shows that she is yeah. getting better well, with age. Isn't, isn't it encouraging that there are athletes in their late 30s that are still absolutely nailing it? And, uh, you know, it's really encouraging for those who are a little bit older than that. So it's Calva who goes first for Norway. She's only 31. Uh, she's only had one win. That was in a 20k in uh, Lati, I believe, a couple of years ago. Uh, so I don't think she's a likely winner, but we expect to see her go through to the knockout phases. For, for those of you who haven't watched a sprint before, we have the qualification. The top 30 only go through to the knockout phases. It's quite nerve-wracking, isn't it? You, you need to have the perfect uh, run out. You know, you've, they've done the warm-up, but you need to get everything right to make it into that top 30. What, nine seconds will separate first? to 30th. Well, there is no doubt that the course they've designed here in Trondheim for next year's World Championships are, they're, they're a course for those who are good at strategy. And why have they done that? Because they have the best, best strategist in the world in <laughs> Johannes Husfurt Klerbo. Uh, in the women's, Jess Diggins is pretty smart when it comes to the racing always aggressive on the downhills. Are the downhills testing enough to give her an advantage? That, that'll be interesting to see as uh, Halva about to get underway. Yes, I think Jesse will read the track so well, get in the right place at the right time. Yeah, they start 15 seconds apart. The tall figure of Shistat is going off number two, uh, looking to get her sixth win on the tour. So Calva is underway, and we've got a field of 59 athletes in the qualification, and one of the favourites going very early on indeed. Still only 24. I remember, where was it, Seyfeld, where she made a big impression on the tour. She did, and then one fall with, what, 10, 15 metres to the line. What an explosive start. Yeah. She's so powerful. Yeah, good to see. Really dynamic. Huge figure. Looks as though she's skiing slowly, but she covers the ground well. Fosnes goes for Norway number three. So that's three Norwegians out on the tr track. And next will be Emma Rebom of Sweden, uh, who's one of the big stars. She leads the sprint standings. Two races, two wins. Can she make it three out of three here today? Yes, Emma Rebaum, two in a row. It would be fantastic to see if she can. But she's also a good distance racer with her fourth position over 10 kilometers. Yeah, I, th I think for the big names like Rebaum, like Shistat, it's all about conserving energy for later on today. But now that they give points for the qualification, which I think is a fantastic introduction, uh, it does mean that you've got to put some effort in and you can't play it quite as tactically as they used to. Lynn Svahn, good to see her back. Shoulder injuries and, and, you know, once you get one injury, as you and I know well, Mike, once you get one injury, it just leads to another. Yeah. But uh, Svahn looks in good shape. She does. And, you know, in 2021, she took four uh, wins and sprints and then had to sit out for the Olympic year. So fabulous that she came back to the podium last weekend in yeah, Osterson. A fifth and a third so far. Uh, we've got splits at 500 metres. She started the fastest by a decent margin over Fosnes. Calva some way back 1.2 seconds off the pace in those first 500 metres. Now she started using that beautiful technique. Uh, a couple of stiff climbs. 
this is going to be a brilliant sprint for the World Championships because just about all of it takes place in the Stadium Bowl. Yeah, you can see almost everything. It, she's done is so deceiving. She doesn't look like she's going fast, Patrick, but that's a blistering pace and she'll probably be, what, fifth fastest, maybe even second fastest to date. Yeah, she's gone through... Um, actually, Shestad has lost a bit of ground to Calva between five and 700. So she's lost a, a second. So that fast start may be uh, costing a, a little bit of uh, time later on. We'll see how she comes into the finish. There's uh, Calva. And Shestad knows she started only 15 seconds behind her. So she must be a little bit concerned. I'm loving this track profile and the fact that you mentioned in the stadium it's visual most of the way around. Now, uh, she's, Dad's just been informed. She needs to pick it up. There she goes. Yeah, that last climb, absolutely key in this race. And I'm just imagining Clebo blasting his way around that corner. He will take time off everyone on that section. Down into the stadium for Calva. The glide looking pretty good. We won't really get an idea of how good the Norwegian skis are until we see the Swedes in action. But Calva seems to have paced this pretty well. She's four seconds down on Lynn Spahn, going through the 700-meter point, though. Uh, but the second half of the race has looked better. 317.92. Is that going to be good enough for a top 30? I should think so. And Shestat does not want to be on the wrong side of the clock coming into the finish. But it's going to be very, very tight. She just gets it. 0.95. So not the most convincing performance from one of the favourites. Do you know, I thought she's dad looked so tight, so nervous on the start line. She wants it uh, to take this victory here so much. I think it's tying her up. Yeah, Fusnes was uh, the slowest through 700 metres so far. So no surprise to see her 3.72 off the leaders. Now, what about Emma Rebon started number four? And is it going green? It is. It is. Good start for Emma Rebon and Sweden, who've been the dominant force in women sprinting over the last three or four years uh, seem to have continued in that vein. Lena Canton for France, 31st in the Olympic Games, missing out on the knockout phases by fractions of a second. Ooh, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. Svan has really set a blistering pace all the way. Look at 6.03 ahead of Rebom. Yeah. Well, that's quite a long run into the finish, Mike, once they're round that high point that we saw earlier and already uh, the strategist will be thinking right the place to be is second place well Lin Linz Fan has really set the bar high there hasn't she taking six seconds ahead of the rest so far It's uh, one, two, three for the Swedes at the moment. Number nine coming in, Antisova of the Czech Republic. Julia Kern of uh, USA started just behind her. She's 377. Uh, Mike, first to 30th, what are we looking at? About six or seven seconds. Yes, I thought maybe as much as nine today, but uh, that's a huge separation at the start. Looks like Maria Hart's Melling is setting the best time now. It's at half distance at 700 meters. Jesse Diggins looks good in fourth position. Yeah, there was a 15-second gap between first and 30 in the Olympic Games. Just trying to remember what it was last weekend in Östersund. Uh, 3.45 was one of the slowest qualifiers. Uh, we're, we're looking at around 10 to 11 seconds uh, last week. On this course, two hills, is it, is it that severe? Well, we'll find out the margin generally telling us how tough the course is. Sophie Krell, 4.33 into third at the moment. Lynn Svon making everyone else look slow. She is, but Melling uh, was ahead by half a second at half distance. Here comes World Cup leader, Jess Diggins, and 5.53. That will be a little bit of a concern. Is that Diggins' form or is it, um, is it skis? I've never, ever heard her say a bad word about skis, but uh, she had a few issues last year. Slightly bizarre that she's doing so well in Classic this year. And uh, there she is, five seconds off the pace in a freestyle sprint. Very interesting. I think when it comes to the head-to-head, -head, the quarterfinals and the semis, I think she'll, she'll fight harder. She'll need to fight harder. 
Melling went so hard early on and up to 700, she really faded over the second half of this course. Snow's coming down heavy now. Yeah, and that, that helps that helps Svan. I think we can say Svan is going to end up top of the list at the end of this uh, qualification. Uh, Johensu has gone through the 500 really well. She started 24, uh, has the fastest time at 5. Melling is the fastest at 0.7, but we've seen her uh, come in in second place. Olkinen goes seven. That's okay. I'm not sure the snow has affected the times quite yet. Uh, but what about the early starters, Mike? How, how are they doing, the ones, twos, and threes? Well, I think, do you know, I, the snow just feels so wet right now. It's coming on so much heavier in the last four minutes. It was there at the start, but, but I think this is playing a small part to the glide factor. Yeah, well, the forecast for this afternoon is, is a good three degrees warmer than it is now and continued rain. Uh, the forecast for tomorrow is rain. The forecast for Sunday, more rain. Not what the organisers here in Trondheim wanted. Uh, and there isn't that, you know, they've laid down artificial snow, but there isn't that much natural snow around. Ila, 5-7-3 into seventh position. She is safe. So at the moment, Sweden looking okay. Svan the fastest. Melling of Norway's done well in second. Julia Kerner, USA, three. Krell, then Diggins in five. Uh, five seconds behind. What about she stand? How she's standing? Started uh, number two. Just going to check. She's still in 12th, so I think she might survive, but seven seconds off the leaders. Mirvold gets inside. Comfortable qualifying for her. Juensu of Finland started number 24, and she's not far off that leading time as far and just 1.1 outside. Second place. Interesting. Remember, she set the best track time in the first race of the season up at home, up in Ruka, but then uh, finished, I think it was sixth there. Uh, yeah, last in the final. Well, we do need Finland and Norway to challenge the Swedes and the Americans, of course. The Americans have been doing a great job so far. First time ever, two women top of the overall World Cup. Uh, and it's lifted the men's team. It's lifted the spirit. The spirit's always high in that American team, but it seems to have even raised it to another level. Maya Dahlquist, last year's sprint champion. Slightly later start for her and 6-9-2 outside. Well, 15th place. I still think she'll probably be safe. Hegstrom is going to be inside as well. So that's another Swede qualified. Very strange conditions. Look, a minute and a half later, when I said the snow is coming really strong now, it's backed off completely. So those small changes in weather will make an effect on the glide factor on the skis. Yeah, it's Trondheim. That's what happens. Trondheim, yeah. Bergen, anywhere on the west coast of Norway. Uh, you get the same weather as Fort William. You know all about it. <laughs> Yep, a big sea influence, big damp, wet influence, uh, without a doubt. Feindrich, good to see her coming back strong. Yeah, two wins for Feindrich last year at about this time of the season, and 4.27. What about Rosie Brennan? So impressed with what Rosie's done this year so far. Second in the overall World Cup standings. She's going to be within six seconds, and that should be safe for us, but she's not going to get uh, masses of uh, points. Fisher, 13th, 30th place. A uh, couple of nervous moments. May not take long for someone to better that time. I think 13 seconds is a bit too far outside. Weber on 10. She's going into the top 30. So Fisher is gone. One Swiss athlete replaces another. Victoria Carl. Wow, great race from Victoria Carl. And that, no doubt, inspired by her podium finish in Ostersund last week. Incredible. She's doing uh, the, the, you know, getting the podiums, getting the good results. Classic. I thought it may change today, but she's absolutely informed both techniques. Only 201 outside. Iduka looks to be going well. It's going to be late 20s. Come on. Is she going to get in there? She does. 28th for now. Uh, and uh, Fosnes on the verge of being knocked out. Fosnes now at 10.75. Remember last weekend, the margin between 1 and 30 was 11 seconds. Uh, I still feel it's going to be a little bit less than that. Steiner 
right on the bubble at the moment. Just the wrong side of it, to be honest. Ridzek uh, just ahead of her. Ridzek, the sister of the Nordic combiner, who looks good this year with the ski jumping. Skiing always skis well, but uh, his ski jumping looks improved. He'll be in action later today. Maya is going to be touch and go. Watch those positions tick by. She just makes the top 30 for now. So 10, uh, well, 10, 7, 5 seconds back to 30th position. So looking at the positions at the moment, Svan leads for Sweden. As we see Niemela come in, this is going to be top 30, I think, uh, just. And uh, <laughs> she'll have to wait and see. It's very, very tight down the bottom end. It's a huge margin between the top 10, five seconds separating the top 10. But Svan leads. Juentsu's had a stormer for Finland in two. Victoria Kara, Germany, three. Melling of Norway, four. Kern of USA, five. And Feindrich of Switzerland, six. When did we last see six nations represented in the top six of a qualification? Absolutely brilliant. Uh, she's dad is the biggest concern, I would say, for the Norwegian. She's still down in 21st place, 7 on 03 behind. <laughs> Have a look at these conditions. Yeah, absolutely astonishing. Well, this is what the forecasters <laughs> uh, the, the tourist board will be happy. They want the tracks covered. They do not want to be spending any more money on artificial snow than they have to. As we watch Claudel go into 32, unlucky with the draw. She knows, and she will have known when she started, that in these snowy conditions, progress will be slow. But actually, Mike, wet snow slows you down a little bit less than that cold, thin snow that we saw in Yalabari. It's uh, so interesting. I, I mean, that these are quite big snowflakes and, and the wet, the heavy, fast dropping which we're seeing there, that, that's sucky snow. Yeah, this, this snow was designed for school kids. It is perfect for snowballs. Uh, and, and I suspect that a lot of the kids who've turned up to watch are, bu are busy doing something else right now. Divol down in 37, so plenty of Norwegians missing out today. Drivnes is number 40. No, that's the end of her day's action, but doesn't look happy. I think uh, probably frustrated by the snowy conditions and um, oh, what a did, shame. did what she a... take a fall may have done may have done the big moment you know you get one chance to race World Cup brought into the team for this event but that's a real shame yeah and she was in tears before she saw the results so I think something must have happened out there on the tracks what about McCabe of USA will she join Diggins and Brennan no is the answer uh, gets a top 50 for now but 15 seconds is anyone going to be able to come from the back end? Only 59 entries. Much smaller fields this year in the cross country. What's making it almost untouchable for the weaker nations and finance as well is, is without a doubt playing a part. It's very difficult to bring your team, your race team, with so many backup that you need and the costs involved. Andreasen of Norway, 1536. Yeah, tough going. I don't know what the perfect draw was, but I suspect uh, I suspect you wanted at least 10 or 15 people to ski the tracks in uh, and then make your charge. Linz Farm went number six. Jensu uh, went 24. Victoria Carl, 33. Uh, Feindrich, 29. You would have expected Feindrich to be there anyway, but there are quite a few athletes in the 20s who've made it into the top 10. Aituka is still in the race to make it through to the quarterfinal. She's 30th position. And I think she might survive there. Not so many left out on the track. Yeah, only 59. So we've got another seven finishers. And Stepashkina is not going to make an impression from Kazakhstan. Still um, most... Do we go all the way back to 1985 for the most uh, famous Kazakh cross-country skier, Vladimir Shminov? Yeah, and he did well here, didn't he? And what was that back in 1997, the last time the yeah. World Championships came here? Yeah. yeah, he did even better in Thunder Bay, but I think there's some... Uh, yeah, that was the early days. <laughs> early days of um, substance abuse, let's call it that. 
Yeah, these tail enders, they're not going to, I don't think they're going to push through. Amelia Wells, uh, Bib 57 coming up soon. Maybe she has a chance. Melnick, 32 off the leaders. Yeah, they're struggling now. The gap's not usually this big at the back of the field. So Svan, 309.94, uh, pretty much standard time for a sprint course. Esterson was just a little bit longer than that. Three, what, 3.30, I think, uh, the fastest qualification up in, in Sweden last weekend. Fairly long haul across Sweden to Trondheim. If you, if you don't know where Trondheim is, anyone anyone who's seen the uh, map of Norway, it's the top end of the bulb, uh, the top end of the onion, as I, I would call it. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. Just about as much water as there is land. And I do like this. It's an interesting track profile. There's so much flat, uh, gently down prior to this final brutal finish. And when you're lined up six or six alongside each other, this is going to be a very tough one to call the right timing when you make it to the front. Travel will obviously get it right, uh, I would imagine. But uh, very, very technical. And it's not that testing a track. So it will allow a pack to stay together very easily. Well, there are the standings. Uh, there won't be any changes now. Um, yeah, the, 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 have to feel really sorry for the youngsters, uh, particularly the Norwegian youngsters brought in their first chance at a World Cup from Trondheim, uh, and they just weren't able to make an impression because of the conditions. Uh, there was no way they were battling through that snowstorm. Uh, Iduka is lucky 30, so she gets to go again today. All these athletes missing out. Uh, Ridzek hasn't made it. Fosnes hasn't made it. Uh, good news for the Americans with Diggins and Brennan looking good but McCabe is out and further down Bygrave of Australia missing out and a couple of DNS's Skinder and Jordberg but it's Lynn Svahn who is uh, top of the pecking order at the moment look at that that's that's it <laughs> look if there was this much snow in Britain over a 24-hour period, it would be on the front pages of every paper. Um, you know, that's an inch and a half in the space of this qualification. It's incredible. It's what, 20 minutes on the clock from the first athlete starting, and we had about five different changes in, in the intensity of the snow falling. And I think uh, it's, it's clearly played a part in the, in the latter skiers. I think they were disadvantaged most. And I'm really surprised Fusnes didn't get through. She showed good form last weekend in Ustersund. The yeah. first Ness has to settle for 33rd today. Do you carry a bike around with you everywhere you went? <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's a good way, isn't it, to yeah. just get the lactic out of your legs, get the recovery uh, done quicker. And especially when you're then making it from the quarterfinals into the semi, into the finals. Very important to keep the legs moving and taking the weight off the legs. Just keep the legs spinning is a great weight. Yeah been used for years I, I remember going to Iceland in about 1895 or something and uh, in the sprint races there the the athletes were all on the bikes in between and all the internationals who traveled there were left out in the cold <laughs> I'm just thinking did you say 1895 it wasn't far off where's Jesse Diggins going to go today I think again I, I, I don't know why but I think we'll see her opting for heat five yeah, be interesting. Try and get an easy ride through the first round. This is the tough decision. Which group are you going to go for? So hopefully we're just a few seconds away from the start of group selection for the women after the qualifying has been completed. Team Sweden in a huddle. I like the jackets. And um, yeah, you need a decent jacket here today. It's quite interesting. They were discussing the groups. I thought there'd be a coach in there sort of guiding them, maybe giving them a hint, but it just entirely seemed like it was athlete-led. Yeah. And uh, they've got a good spread of athletes in there in the top 30. Well, the Swedes are, are often confident enough 
for to go in one heat each, aren't they? Increase their chances of getting through to the finals. And there's seven of them in there, Patrick. Seven in the top 30. That's a good, good yeah. outing. Yeah. But they're not one, two, three, four, as they often are after qualification. So it's not quite such an easy day for them. Who will they be wanting to avoid uh, in terms of groups? Yes, who, I would have, who will they be scared of? I, I would have thought she stad. They wouldn't want to. Well, here we go. She had the option of uh, any of the heats, but uh, she's gone for heat three, Brennan. Jesse Diggins, I said five, she's gone for four. Hextrom. Well, everyone, everyone going for minimum rest at the moment, which is <laughs> slightly bizarre, but uh, we'll work our way down the order. Brennan finished 11th, was the first to select. Whoops, don't pour your coffee all over the timer. That, that could put pay to, uh, to the selection. Hopefully, Mirvold's coffee uh, just missed. <laughs> Sophie looks strong. That's uh, one of her best performances so far this season, sprinting. So, um, are we waiting for Feindrich? There she is. Remember, two wins in succession last year. And uh, the Swiss really had high hopes for her at the World Championships in Planitza. Didn't work out that way. She didn't make the final, finished ninth in the end. Interesting. I'm just sorry, just thinking about the American selection there. Rosie Brennan for heat three, Jesse Diggins for four, now Julie, Julia Karen for heat five. They're not wanting to maximize the rest, but yeah. a good strategy in terms of hoping for slightly weaker heats. Victoria Carl goes for heat five. Everyone trying to avoid Lynn Sparm, uh, who will be after Juventus. Juventus says, get in there. And she goes for heat number one. Good for her. Uh, and of course, Lynn's farm was. Um, did she go? Did she go for one, two? Actually. She went for two. What's go, what is going on? Well, mate, what are they thinking? Mate, are they thinking, anticipating there's going to be more snow later, and uh, you don't want to take a heat where you're you're being held back, if you like, by fresh snow? Very strange. Ma'ila, much improved um, skier this year. And now the ah, big Rebaum. names, Emma Rebaum, who leads the sprint standing. She goes for one. I cannot see uh, any more Swedes going for heat number one. Four, yep. Still three Swedes to uh, select. Well, which, which heat would you go for now if you were just thinking, I want to get through to the semis and that's, go that's a good day for me? I think I would go heat four. Although you've got a roadblock with Jesse Diggins and Hagstrom. Yeah, well, Stenseth thinks like you. Lotta, any news on Tilda this way? Very surprised she's not coming back this year. It's a real shame. The yeah. overall winner from last year hasn't turned up yet. Yeah, this time last year she, was, she could do no wrong. Uh, Frida Carlson, nice to see her doing okay. Uh, better classic sprinter really well she's a better classic distance skier uh, to be honest but I think Carlson feeling I've got to get some points in the sprint if I want to win the overall this year she wasn't convincing in the distance race last weekend at all she but that's after a health uh, yeah. issue with COVID so a real serious health issue yeah yeah interesting situation Diggins um, yeah laughing at the moment she's done no problem group one bring it on now group one is now uh, a scary prospect uh, and someone else is going to have to go in there. Two more athletes have got to go. I suspect it might be those at the bottom of the uh, result table. Fink goes for four. So that group is full, as is Heat 3. Two for Calva, who, remember, was the first athlete away this morning. So she's had a long rest. And they uh, head off back. What, you know, a little bit of a, a warm down, a little bit of stretching. They've got a while to go. Um, what would be your routine after the after the uh, group selection? Yeah, you've just got to manage your time well. You've got to fill the time well. I saw Calva was having a light snack, a second breakfast, uh, rest up for a short while, then get out for a warm up within 30 minutes of your heats uh, start time. Yeah, I think Gal and Aiduka are going to be going in group one, Oops. not by choice. Uh, but that's what you get for finishing 29 and 30 
in the warm-up. Don't think it's going to be a tough decision. No, two slots left, and they're both in Group 1, so uh, all the chatting with the coach comes to nothing. Good luck. That's going to be tough. 11-second difference between the fastest and the slowest. Um, she stand. That I, I, I quite, quite impressed that she, she had no hesitation going for Group 1. Yes, yeah, she seems totally confident, and I wonder, uh, because she started second, the snow wasn't entirely at its heaviest at that moment, but she started fast and then she seemed to back off. Yeah. It, yeah. A, a risky game, but she's got uh, Group 1 exactly where she would want to be. Yeah, but, but the, the, I don't think there's any doubt that she stat knows from, from mistakes that she, more than anyone else, has to pace herself. We've seen her get through to the final on many occasions and then she's finished sixth, just hasn't had the, had the gas. Uh, we saw it in the World Championships. You know, that was a really disappointing run for her in the end. She, she ended up in fifth in, in Planitza, whereas we were thinking medals were a certainty. Um, so she's trying to learn her lesson. Two podiums from two sprints. She's doing okay this year. She is. And, and you know, she would love to make this weekend uh, a one with her third or second. Uh, it'd be a nice sequence of numbers, wouldn't it? You certainly would. And uh, a positive uh, end to this phase prior to the Christmas break. Yeah. So the women's selection is done. Well, the men's qualification still to come here in Tron time. Um, you know, these weather conditions aren't perfect, but they, they, they'll be hoping that the, the snow continues and the rain that has been forecast for the next 48 hours doesn't materialise. It will indeed. And of course, James Clooney will be starting the men's race. He'll be out first. Uh, and I think it's OK. The, the snow, it's very wet snow now, but it has backed off. Well, they're tough up here, aren't they? Uh, out all day for this one. Yeah, I was just trying to think which group Victoria Carl went in. Um, I know the Swedes make a positive effort to try and avoid her because she's quite an aggressive racer out on the tracks. She's such a, yeah, you know, she's such a, a dominant... Rough, a rough, yeah. She, uh, you know, takes she's, up a lot of track. She's got presence. Yeah. Yeah, to be avoided. Yeah. Uh, if, if you want a, an easy, clean run. And she must be feeling incredibly positive about her performances this year, Victoria Carl. And I think that's got a ripple. It's a positive effect through the whole German team. Yeah. Looking much better today. Sophie Creel was looking more dynamic. So they're, they're believing in themselves again. Yeah. Do you think we'll see Hennig get a win this year? Yes. Yep. She's still got that health issue. Uh, she may be starting tomorrow. I haven't heard, but uh, yet yeah, certainly unwell and missed last weekend. Well, a very good morning if you've just joined us. Trondheim, the host nation, for this round of the Cross Country World Cup. We've had uh, Ruka, we've had Yalavari, we've had Ustersund. We are still in Scandinavia uh, on the west coast of Norway. And this, of course, the venue for next year's World Championships. It's also, Mike, where Andy Musgrave bases himself. Uh, that's got to be a home. It's just, Well, it feels like his home now. He's been here for so long. He's based here with his partner and uh, he must feel good about coming to the stadium and Andy Young of course and um, Musgrave he's not a bad sprinter but he's not a sprinter um, you know he'll be hoping for great things in the skiathlon I think the skiathlon could be a good one for him in, uh, you know that's tomorrow and then the 10k on Sunday yeah, 10, 10K Classic, so I think he's going to have a good weekend. He used to be a sprinter, though, didn't he? But he's more gone the, the big distance now, and, and he's doing so incredibly well. Yeah, he won the Norwegian Championships just before the Olympics in Pyeongchang in South Korea. Caught everyone by surprise on that occasion. So let's have another look at the course for the men's uh, sprint qualification coming up in a few minutes time it's that second climb that uh, is the, and the last bit of that climb Mike which is very very steep with that left hand turn at the top reminds me a little bit of Oberstdorf uh, the tactics coming in into that absolutely crucial there's certainly and you know you've got 475 meters of descent and flat into the finish so it's I can't think of another track where we've got such a long time downhill and flat to the line yeah and and 
I said a little earlier that you want to be in second place going around the corner into that downhill, unless, of course, you can get 20 metres clear. But it's such a long way. Do you really want to lead out from 400 metres? If you're Clabble, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how he plays it. Andy Young going off number 35 into the freestyle technique, which is something that uh, he'll certainly appreciate that. Andy Musgrave going 53. And a slightly bigger field in the men's, 80 in all, and 15 seconds in between each of the starters. James Clunay is going to be the first away, who <coughs> essentially from Grenoble, but he's um, French, English, races for the British team. He's done brilliant. When was his debut? Back in 2017, and he got his first World Cup's points the next season. Uh, and, and, you know, he's, he, he plays a major part, doesn't get as many headlines as certainly as Andy Musgrave, but uh, he's an exciting sprinter. I think he is. And, and the fact that it's freestyle this weekend, he was disappointed last weekend and in Ruka. But uh, I think this will suit James and Andrew Young as well. Do you think he's got the tactical nous to do well here? He's got to get through the qualification first, though. I think he showed that in Davos, didn't he, last year, where he managed to make it through to the final. Yes, it didn't do, do the way he wanted it in the final, but I think he shows clever track work now. So maturing as the years have gone by. He's got uh, Amundsen behind him, the man in yellow. Yeah, I'm not sure it's a brilliant start number to have today. Oh, my goodness, Amundsen, he's got... <laughs> He should be a high jumper. Oh, he, he has a lot of, uh, you know, spring in the legs. Um, yeah, how, how much do these guys employ plyometrics, which are sort of the big thing amongst athletes and sprinters? Yes, I think they do quite a lot. Uh, certainly when I was uh, up in, based in Norway, they, they were really into the reactive, the, the explosiveness, and certainly bound, bounding, ski bounding is that kind of plyometric explosiveness. Yeah, it's, it's all about generating maximum power in as short a time as possible. That is where Clairvaux is so good. There he is, going off number six. He's only got a minute and a half once the race gets underway. So the Swedish women who generally dominate did not have it all their own way. The Norwegian men who always dominate will be hoping that they can get four or five into the top positions. Are there any courses on the World Track where you, on the World Cup, Mike, where you feel you have to pace yourself a bit more even in qualification because by the time you get to the final, uh, you need something left in the tank. It felt like, and the way we saw she start as James Clooney starts, say, I think this course, maybe you have to be a little careful. Take it within yourself. So, Clooney, good over 50 metres. We should really have a split at 50, shouldn't we? In Ostersund last week in the 10K, uh, he looked fantastic. He struck lucky, tucking in behind Simon Hegstead Kruger on uh, Kruger's second lap. And uh, Amundsen looking very strong. So we'll see whether that confidence rides over to today. Danielson, the first of the Swedes away. 22-year-old. He comes from Hugbo, which is east of Farland. Uh, the sort of capital of Swedish cross-country skiing, I guess some would say. Falness, a first. And a second. Oh, we nearly stumbled over there. He's number one in the sprint standings. Hence, he is wearing the red bib. He's a big, strong man. <laughs> oh, my goodness, he's gone off hard. Helfegger, is it going to be as explosive? It's OK. Not quite as dynamic as Valnes. Yeah, that was. I would have said that was conservative from Helfegger of uh, Italy. Now, Clerbo, what are we going to see? We'll get a split at 500. Amundsen has just gone through that stage in 58 seconds. Whoa! <laughs> Love it. Have a look at that. He's flying already. And uh, Clebo, whose distance skiing is nowhere near where it was last year. But the sprint in Ostersund, I think, put a big smile on people's faces, Mike. He took, what, 50 metres out of everyone over the space of about 200. That was just so beautifully smooth. I loved that right leg going way forward to just paddle down and then float across the other side. And, of course, he's racing at home as well here, Clebo. Absolutely. He's desperate to win here. And, um, yeah, his family obviously follow everything he does. But... Uh, There'll be many watching today. 
surprised Valnes wasn't free skating, tucking low and free skating for longer, but he knows what he's doing. It's easy saying that sitting here, but clearly he's picking up the pace to the top of that last rise. Now he's explosive again. Yeah, I'm just imagining the noise in the World Championships, Mike, when the athletes come through that stage in the stadium. It is going to be deafening. Uh, you know, you were lucky enough to be in Oslo in 2011. 150,000 people watching the 50K. It was incredible. Rivers of people coming off the hill. 150,000 people having to walk down the hill to where the buses were. It was quite amazing, actually. Yeah, and, and I expect we'll see similar scenes uh, post-COVID, of course, so maybe less people will travel. But if you get a chance, you can get a ticket, you can find somewhere to stay. You want to make your way to Trondheim next year. Here comes James Clooney into the finish after his run. He will be the pace setter. It's going to be just over the 250 mark, 251.35. And Clooney will find out fairly shortly whether that is good enough. At half distance, James was uh, five seconds behind Clabo. Amundsen... 2.8 inside again we're looking for a, a margin of around that 11 second mark just check to see the qualification um, different courses give you different time time differentials of course but uh, yeah we were looking at nine seconds in Ostersund between 1 and 30 Valnes he's not going to get the green light but he goes into second. So Norway one and two at the moment. Danielson of Sweden in three. And Clune uh, dropping down the order. Hopefully not as far as 30. We'll keep an eye on it. Clevo in the background coming in. He's going to have taken quite a lot of time out of Helvega, who had a very, very steady start. Here comes Clevo. Eight seconds. He's going to be well inside. The light is going green by a massive <laughs> margin. Sensational. 4.22. And I think uh, it wouldn't be too foolish to say there's your qualification winner. He's back, Mike. He's Every, everything about him is just so smooth. And, and then he walks away as if he's not out of breath. Everyone else hanging on the ski poles. But I think part of that is a, a psychological act. <laughs> he's frightening the rest. But uh, how just so beautifully smooth, Clebo. And the rest will suffer to get anywhere near that time. At the moment, he's 4.22 ahead of the next fastest. Oscar Svensson for Sweden. Uh, just can't see him at the split. So he, we know he was outside the top seven. Uh, and he goes into seventh in the finish at the moment. 7.64 behind. Of the later starters, uh, Yannick Riebley, he's done really well for Switzerland. He's gone through 500 metres in fourth position, so we'll keep an eye out for him. He started number 15. Yoni Maki into eighth, having started 10. Well, everyone's being made look slow. Good news at the moment is that Clune is still in the top six. That's good. I'm, I'm waiting for Pellegrino through the 500. I think Pellegrino is going to try. Of course he is going to try and push Clebo, and I think he may well set the second fastest. Yeah, Jensen of Norway coming up. Then we've got uh, Michael Novak. Ben Ogden, who's third in the sprint standings, is uh, wearing bib number 14 today. Ben Ogden's had a great season. We were excited by him last year. And I think he's stronger and better this time round. Novak, who started 13. Ogden just coming round the corner. or oh, having bigged him up. I'm not sure it's going to be his best one. Here he is. Anything within five seconds, I think, will be all right. But he's going to be very, very tight to that margin. It's more. 6.5 outside. And just squeezes in ahead of James Clooney of Great Britain. I think he'll be slightly uh, confused. Here's Reebley, who was uh, right at the top of the order after just 500 metres, but has lost a lot of time in the second half of the course. Perhaps a little bit too ambitious coming out of the start gate. Hegstrom is next. Uh, next big name, Paul Goldberg, Mike. Any news on him? Starting 18. Yeah, it's not, uh, he's not at the top end. Neither is Pellegrino. Really surprised with Pellegrino. Running about 16 fastest at the moment. That's at 700 metres. Goldberg should be across the line in the next 15 seconds. Yeah, Goldberg, five and a half seconds off at half distance, so not a great start for him. 
journey. That's okay. At least he looks like he may qualify through. It's well, 13 seconds behind. Yeah, Goldberg's going to be five seconds off the pace, but he's still in the top 10. That will do okay. Uh, he's going to miss out on some valuable points for the qualification. Looks as though the full quota of 15 are going to Johannes Husford Klebo. Uh, won't be long before he's challenging for the top position in the World Cup rankings at this rate. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what he does over the next two days. I think with him being on form, with him racing at home, and the fact that he's broken the field by 4.22, it's not over yet, but Pellegrino is not going to challenge. He's going to be okay, though, surely. In 12th? Yeah. At the moment, what do you think? Yeah, that's okay. And when it gets into the quarter, uh, yes, semi-finals, he'll be sharper and sharper as the day goes on. James Clooney still in the... Well, he was in the top 10, just being pushed out into 11th by Evan Nortug. Uh, Nortug started the season really well, 6.92. Um, yeah, everyone would be scratching their heads, thinking, how do we beat Clairbo? And that's without any tactics employed. That was just all out speed. But both of us sat back in our chairs when we saw Clairbo coming out of that start gate. It was incredible. And, you know, he got up to pace so quick, so much faster than the rest. Evanson, that's a, another strong performance. And Clavo, I can't think when he last broke the field by that margin. I think we've seen four or five once upon a time, but this looks like possibly the best stretch, yeah. the best leading margin in the qualification. Big lunge for the line from Moy Lennon, gets him inside Sellers' time. Taupol of Norway, he's going into the top three. That's a great run from Taupol. He'll be delighted. He's a bit of a bull. Uh, his Taupol, he's strong. He's he's about eight inches shorter than most of the Norwegians, but he, he makes up for it with power. Edvin Anger, who's uh, another massive Fantastic. figure on the tour. 3.07, good run from him. And let's hope that he challenges here today. Yes, he was, what, three times in fourth position last year in sprint racing. He really would love a podium. Chapa, that's good. He's there. He's thereabouts. Yeah, the French with Chapa and, and Juve. They haven't really got themselves into top gear, but that is a good sign. Shanova goes in a two. So Norway ahead of France, ahead of Sweden in the finish. Shanova who did a lot of training with Clebo in the in the summer months. I think those two enjoyed their, each other's company. Most of it with their shirts off. Uh, Shun May seventh. So that's actually a very good run. Only five oh seven off off the off Clebo, but uh, he's only two seconds off third place. Yes, I think. Uh, well, there is a uh, and a young. That's Vang. That was Vang. Sorry, same suit. Starting uh, 32. That's a <laughs> fabulous time. That is absolutely fantastic. And uh, actually, going through 700 meters, Vang was in second place. He was second to Clebo at 500. So uh, this could be a little bit of history coming our way. Oh, stay tuned for the sprints this afternoon because that would be so exciting to see China in the top th top six. Well, he looks so dynamic. He's had some bad luck, hasn't he, at the Olympics as well, where uh, I think he yellow carded and didn't wasn't allowed to start because he uh, broke free too early. Andrew Young should be in very soon. He's 27th position at half distance. Yeah, he needs to pick it up. He started number 35. This is him. That's, yep. Oh, 30th position, and he knows it. He knows it. That will not be good enough. We've got a field of 80, and I just can't see us going very long before that time is better. And in fact, it takes exactly 15 seconds. Sossau of Germany comes through to push Young out of the qualification, and he goes into 24th slot. Volker goes 13, so he is going to get involved, uh, you would think. Six seconds should be close enough. We're looking uh, generally 
eight to ten seconds, depending on the course. Cement of Slovenia, he's going, oh, just missing out, just missing out. 8.18 behind. Well, the margin serves smaller than normal. That's a shame, Andrew Young, 33rd position now, just outside. James Clooney, it's kind of midfield, 17th position. And the Musgrave racing, we've got Gabriel Gledhill also racing. He starts number 73. Yes, Gledhill, uh, Strathcona Nordic, that's on uh, Vancouver, Ireland, so a uh, British passport holder, but most of his skiing in Canada. Yeah, done quite a lot in Alaska, I believe. Good skier, very good skier. Uh, you know, you can, GB now have a pretty good relay team, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Bring it down to a four by five. I think they'd be really effective. Certainly would. This is good for us. Uh, of Sweden. Yeah, that uh, is great news for Sweden. He is in there. Best of the Swedes at the moment. Uh, Edvin Anger, who sits in fourth place. He's been pushed down into fourth by uh, Quang Wang of China. So the top positions at the moment as Jaeger of USA fails to get through. Klebo, Vang, Shanova, Anger, Amundsen, Taubol, Jules Chapaz. So again, quite a nice mix of nationalities. Four in the top four. That's unusual in the men's sprint. We saw six nationalities in the top six of the women's. Things are looking up. Yeah, Shanova, this course really does suit Shanova, that huge upper body strength that he has and, and his beautiful, smooth ease on his efficiency on the skis. Okay, so he's got that. Um, how, how, though, do you beat Clairbo on this course? <laughs> Almost impossible, but uh, when we saw the track pace there of, of Wang, I think he could be challenged. You know, it's all about strategy now coming off that very final right-hander and uh, just deciding where you're going to pass break free so a very tactical final what 500 meters to the but, strike but, but if he's got a weakness it's in courses that have a very long finish and i think this one falls into that category you can guarantee that if he wants to he could break clear on at the top of the hill before the last left-hand corner but can he maintain the pace all the way through to the finish? If someone's in his slipstream, maybe he's vulnerable. I think so. Eh? We'll have to wait and see. And, uh, you know, Grabo will have uh, tested and played around with his intervals on this, this course, deciding where it's best and most efficient to break free. And maybe he'll just take it from the gun in the final. Skonis uh, disappointed there. Look at that. He wanted more. And I think the conditions, Patrick, are slightly kinder now. All that fresh snow is well compacted in now. But these are lower-ranked uh, athletes now uh, desperately trying to make the top 30. Yeah. Sometimes I feel so sorry for them. I wish there was a plate competition so they could get involved in the knockouts as well. Dominic Berry, 13.34. That's uh, six seconds outside what is required. 30th position at the moment is uh, 806 behind. Vernon's the man sitting there. Musgrave doesn't make any impression on the top. Uh, 30, 44th position. That's not a bad run, actually, from Musgrave. I think he'll be pretty happy with that and feel that was a good burnout before tomorrow's ski athlon just get a sneaky feeling he's going to be able to do something Humbo of Norway that's uh, a good run he's the is he going to be the only one outside the top 50 to qualify he may well be just looking at 0.7 uh yeah, he's, he's the last late starter after George Ersen of Sweden, who put in a tremendous run. Um, Mike, it does look as though if you want to do well here, you have to be in a good position after 700 metres. So you've got no choice. You've got to start hard. 
You've got to start far there, hard. There's Will Cocker, his famous father, the American who took the overall Crystal Globe, the overall World Cup leader, winner back in what, 1983? Wasn't he a Bill as well? He was Bill, his was son Bill. is Will. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just to confuse matters. Uh, he was the man who said, getting to the top is easy, staying there is nearly impossible. He did well though, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And he, you know, he invented, a, he, he knew skating was coming. He trained for it more than most. Take the saddle off his bike, go out for four hours without a saddle. Just what, his legs were huge. And uh, adapted well to the freestyle, which was starting to come in. Another strong American yeah. performance, is it enough? No. Not quite for McMullen. Yeah, but uh, Cook was sort of along the lines of use the wax on the uphill and then take it off for the downhill. Uh, but that inevitably left to take the wax off altogether and skate. It, it, yeah, those were interesting years, weren't, weren't they? Weren't they great years? And, and, you know, characters like Vazberg, who disappeared into the woods for three months because he saw it coming and came out and, and absolutely stormed the World Championships down in Obstdorf, I think it was, that year. Um, yeah, it, it, it was great times where everyone was thinking for themselves. Goodness Farm turning, turning up with one pole about three and a half metres long. Everyone else thinking he was onto something. <laughs> <laughs> they thought, has this evolved again? Thirteen point nine three. The difference, four or five seconds to make up for Grow if he wants to find himself in the top thirty. So, um, what about uh, James Clooney? Um, he was uh, in the top 20 going through the 700 metre mark. He's lying in 20th position. So of all the British athletes, he's the only one to qualify for the knockout phases. So that's a great run. Was that advantageous to go early? He went number one. I don't think it was. You know, there's an element of being tight and being out front, nobody to chase. So you're, you're slightly tighter in, in terms of your skiing, I think. So I believe that uh, James will feel more relaxed in the pack. And I think he has a chance to make it through to the semi. And if he makes the semi, he's got a chance to make it through to the final. Yeah, uh, you know, it's interesting, isn't it, Mike? What, six seconds between the top 10 and then two seconds between 10 to 30. So he's right in the mix. He's going to have some great racing, whatever happens. Uh, the, ch the choice of group is vital. Now, will James say, OK, let's go five. Let's try and get through to the semis. He possibly will. I'm trying to think. He will get a he will get a decent choice uh, in 20th position. And it's a shame for Andrew Young. He's only 0.43 of a second from qualifying. Margins are so tight. Never wear a hat with a white top. Everyone thinks you've done a head plant. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he did. Alev, 16.87 for Estonia um, and so many of these athletes Mike without a major championships this year they're already focusing on coming back here next year this is so important to be here to race the tracks and all those who are ill with Covid will be really regretting missing their chance here Oh, yeah, just to feel the tracks, just to, to, to be competitive with a race bib on on these tracks, I think you need to, it's like the Olympics, the pre-Olympics, so vital to get your feeling, video around the track so you can remember it in the summer months, absolutely vital. But the Norwe Norwegians, I thought, yes, I thought maybe they were slightly weaker, but there's plenty of them there in the top 30. The Campo of Australia, Gledhill, 18.2 down on the leaders, 10 seconds to make up over that time. Well, it is a, a world-class facility that they've developed for next year. Triple glazing doesn't come cheap here, but when it comes to sports stadiums, there's plenty of it around. Just thinking, yeah, the rest of the world, they're competing with nine Norwegians in this men's field who made it into the top 30. Lapierre down in 63rd. The French, uh, I think the French will be happy. Chanova's finished three. Jules Chapin is down in seventh position. 
and we go all the way Renoget down in 23rd uh, Lapalus uh, and Lapierre some way outside so the, the, you know the, the fr French are there news on Juve Juve his ill health had sadly kept him away again this weekend and uh, that's a real shame but then I would imagine during his Windows Christmas break get his strength back get his health back and he will be a a real challenger in the Tour de Ski. Yeah, so many picking up COVID. Uh, it's not what it used to be. I think, you know, that is fair to say, but the athletes don't take any risks. If, they, if they've got any sign of the virus, they stop uh, because, you know, too many were affected long-term last, you know, over the past three years. Oh, you need a good medical backup, don't you? You don't want to go back into training too early, and, and that's probably why... A lot of the big names are, are missing this weekend. Yeah, is it really nearly four years since it started? Really? Is it? <laughs> it is. Well, <laughs> that is crazy. So that is uh, the qualification completed. Victor Santos is the last man across from Brazil. And that is all he will do today. Well outside the top 30 uh, and it leaves one Johannes Husford Clerbo in the top spot, a time of 2.44.33. Uh, but perhaps the biggest news of the day, Mike, is that Wang of China is in second, 2.45.34. He's beaten Shanova and Anger and Amundsen and so many big names. That is so exciting for the Chinese. It, it is. And, he, and the manner in which he did it, he looked so efficient, uh, incredible tempo as he came into the stadium. I think he can... He'll now believe that he can get it right today. He's made too many mistakes tactically, I think, in, in the past. Hopefully he's matured since his last bad mistakes. Well, he, if, if I'm right, he will be the 10th man to choose a group. Will he go for one? He will know that Clairbo is heading for group one. Uh, will he go for one or do you think he'll play it tactically? I think, I think all his advice will be you must go group one to get yourself, buy yourself a longer recovery. That would make sense. Yeah, it will really be a giveaway of, of whether he's thinking about um, making the semis or whether he's really serious about thinking he can win. And I think he'll be thinking the second option. Well, uh, a lot of winter sport going on at the moment and the men's Alpine back in action. And Val Gardena, the host venue at the moment. The speedsters are out. Nick Fellows, Finley Mickle on hand to cover those events for Eurosport. So much power, so much precision. That's going to be a fantastic watch later today. And uh, if it's tipping down with rain where you are, what better to sit back. Some great cross country coming up. Uh, that's without a doubt, uh, followed by uh, the, the speed action from Val Gardena. <laughs> Well, we should get underway pretty soon. Well done to James Clooney getting through. Uh, in the end, Mike, uh, Andrew Young just missing out. A couple of seconds off the pace. Yeah, a real shame. Well, 0.43 of a second uh, to make it into that top 30. So he's, he's there or thereabouts. And Andrew Young will be, I think, very disappointed. Less than half a second, but that is, that is sprinting. Pellegrino, I think Pellegrino would have been expecting more. There he is. But uh, when it comes to the heats, uh, I think you'll perform. Yeah, Pellegrino down in 22. Um, that's a big time margin, Mike, 7.41. Was he playing it tactically? If he was, it was a big, big risk because he was only 0.6 of a second uh, from being knocked out. So the group started. Valnes and Jensen going three and four. They know where uh, the world number one is heading. 
Evanson. He thought about it. He thought about number one. And with nine Norwegians, I wonder if they're spreading themselves. They try not to pack any one particular group, so that's probably a team strategy. Schoenmaken. Jules Schipper goes uh, heat five, looking for an easy ride through to the last 12. Five heats of six, and uh, 12 men go through to the semi-finals. No small final as we used to have in the past. Taupol will be followed by Amundsen. So the Norwegians getting a, a relatively early pick. He looks for some sort of uh, guidance. Go on. One is shining. Come on. Uh, he's going to go three one or five. No, four. He goes four. is uh, packed early. My goodness, that's going to be a competitive heat now. And there's three Norwegians now in that heat four. Yeah. Yeah. This is um, Edwin Anger, and he goes for heat two. So that'll be interesting. Shanavar, yes, he's got uh, he's he's got the power, he's got the nerve. Vang next. Yeah, is Vang going one? I, I think so. No, nope. he goes for heat three. Now, if he can win that, he'll get into the first semi-final. Clairbo never has to think about it. <laughs> Just swaggers up, presses number one, doesn't look at anyone, and then disappears. Uh, it's the warm down. Bit of a massage if he's lucky. Yeah, maybe some food now. Just get himself yeah. recharged. But I love the swagger. The confidence is there. He's the man to beat. Shanavag, obviously he knew that Klaber would go group one, heat one. Yeah, good qualification from Ersen. He started late and uh, I think the Swedes will be delighted that he's got through. Seventh Norwegian goes into heat five. Uh, so every chance that we could see 50% of the finalists from Norway, even more. Um, familiar scenario to the women's race. Well done to Ben Ogden. He's going to tuck in behind Clairbo and Shanova. And it's not a bad move, is it? You know, with, with, that, with those names in heat one, there's every chance that it will be the fa fastest heat. That's my thinking. And I like the bravery, you know, the confidence from Ben Ogden. No problem going to that uh, massively talented heat one. But, but Clairbo doesn't want it to be that fast. He, he'd like it to be slow. So he may go out in front and try and slow it down, confident that he can finish in the top two. Ben Ogden, on the other hand, has to worry about both Clairbo and Shanova. Yeah, so maybe. And then with the snow falling, tiny bit of snow on the track as well, to lead out may not be an advantage. Thune has gone for heat three. Holmbo joins him. Vang, Valnes, Goldberg, Clune. Wow, that's a tough heat three. Valerio Grand for Switzerland completes group five. Svensson. He ran, out, he ran out of options. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he says, I quite fancy taking on the world's fastest. Um, be interesting to see how he gets on. And heat five on paper, look at the rankings there, 7, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 25. On paper, the easier group. Um, one more to go. Kelly Halvarsson of Sweden goes heat number two. So it is uh, now completed as uh, our last man comes up. And <laughs> Steregger of Poland, uh, no option. Have fun. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy the experience. The time, Mike, between Sterega and Clever was eight seconds. Uh, that's about 100 metres. Yeah, very significant. So, of course, it's easier if he's tucked in behind him. He's got all that uh, windbreak effectively ahead of him. So that completes the qualification. Top 30 are all decided. Clevo is going to be the man to chase in the men's and in the women's. It's a very, very open affair. Shestat will be hoping she can do it in front of her home crowd. 
and the Swedes, who've been pretty dominant throughout. Will it be Emma Rebom again? Can she make it three out of three? We'll find out a little bit later on.